Oh, Tingana, the fisherman, what a sighting that was. I was actually there on the back of the vehicle and it was incredible seeing Tingana eat fish and that really shows what an opportunistic predator he really is. The smell, however, I was just telling David, Craig was not a happy man to be on the back of that vehicle. The smell was overpowering. So we're not quite done with Hosanna and Tingana's relationship. There's an one more clip on this that we want to show you with a completely different meaning to it. Now, we have it ready and I may stay silent for a little bit of this because it is an incredibly heartwarming and very cute scene to watch. So let's see what happens. And there we go. Can you, oh, just about, we have Hosanna here and we have Sleepy Tingana. It's very cute and wait to see what is about to happen. So Hosanna is effectively creeping up on his father who is doing what he does best and having a beauty sleep. Now look at that. Oh, let's see if we can go back a second. Possibly not. Let's continue forward. But you can see Hosanna is in sort of nervous, stocky approach modes. He clearly knows Tingana is there and is wondering how he is going to react. It gets a lot more cuter. Now, they both have obviously spotted something or heard something. So they're both looking in the direction of where the camera was. And Tingana's given a little grubble. Hosanna's growling back. <laughs> but Tinkana collapses over onto the grass and is clearly not that bothered that his son has just interrupted his nap time. Oh, another growl. But nothing overtly aggressive or really, really telling Hosanna to go away. So this is the cute part. Now, we, we have Tinkana here. And Hosanna here. Yes, Mark, it's such a good sign and, and it gets better. So you can see here there's quite some distance in between these two cats. And watch what happens now. Hosanna gets a little bit closer. He's a brave boy. Oh, big yawn. He's not ready to sleep yet. <laughs> He's getting closer and closer. There's a few snarls going on here. But obviously nothing big enough to put Hosanna off plonking down and resting about one meter up away from his father. So this is just an adorable sighting. It's so heartwarming and it does show what a social creature Hosanna really is. And he seems to want to spend time next to Tangana here. Now there was just one more part that I wanted to show you. If you just bear with me. Okay, possibly not. The mouse has decided not to work. But Hosanna just stared at his father lovingly and just saying, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, play with me. Please give me some attention, which he clearly got none of. And yes, it was just so adorable and cute to watch. So Hosanna is a curious cat. Now, I know that's a cat. A a catchphrase we say about all cats, but he really is. And all of these little clips that we're going to show you show that he's curious. His mother, Karula, who I never had the pleasure of meeting, disappeared when he was about 13 to 14 months. So he, from then on in his life, he's just brought himself up, taught himself many things, learned along the way, even although Tingana was always present. So by nature, Hosanna is very curious and I'm sure has got himself in some pickles. But this adorable sighting shows exactly how curious he is and social. He seems to want to spend time with Tingana from what we can observe. And of course, leopards are solitary animals. They're normally alone, always on their own. Yes, Larina has seen a small price to pay to stay in Tangana's territory. Exactly. So right now they both are in the same area and it's definitely Tangana's. He patrols the area, he sent marks, it's solely his 
territory, but of course Hosanna resides in there. And he is starting to show signs of practicing his scent marking, doing things that a dominant male leopard would do, but he's not quite there yet. So again, it comes back to what is going to happen in the year 2019. And what is remarkable about this sighting is how tolerant Tingana is. I think that is exactly what surprises everyone. His father is really tolerant of his presence. Clearly, they were about one meter apart from there, each other, in this adorable sighting. So, Hosanna, Tingana, father, son, probably one of the most interesting relationships we do have out here. And later on, we are going to move on to other relationships that Hosanna has out with his family members. But for now, let's go across to Steve, who is actually looking for a real leopard to show you for now. Thank you, Lauren. Well, very interesting indeed. We've managed to find ourselves a couple of kuru, enjoying a little bit of the shade, browsing a little bit on what looks to be one of the bush willows. But indeed, 2019, I suppose, for the little chief with his injury, it's been a bit of an interesting start for him. I don't think he's going to be too concerned with it. No doubt it's going to heal sometime soon. He'll be right as rain. We're all a little bit concerned. But, you know, he's got to keep cleaning it, keep licking it. And, well, he will just be perfect in the coming weeks. I have absolutely no doubt. The little chief, Hosanna, turned up sporting a fresh injury. The deep gash in his back left leg is possibly from a warthog encounter early on in the week. Hosanna did not let this injury hold him back as he tidied up a very smelly remains of a stashed meal. Paused for a refreshment. Then he took to resting for the remainder of the day, hopefully to promote a quick recovery. Indeed, he is not allowing his injury to hold him back, and maybe we'll have a scene with Hosanna in the coming weeks where he catches a kudu like his cousin Atamba managed to do. He wasn't able to hold on to that kudu, but no doubt Little Chief will at least have a good go. He definitely has become a very powerfully built young gentleman. He still has a little way to go until he's caught up with his dad, but um, he's doing very, very well. Beautiful kudu, feeding. I enjoy this time of year with lots of forbs, lots of flowers. Mm, mouthful there of leaves. It is very peaceful out here, folks. It's really peaceful. Very nice, gentle breeze coming in from the right-hand side. Beautiful kudus sitting in the shade, enjoying a little bit of a lunch, a late afternoon tea. What is she doing with her ears, though? It's almost as if she's spotted something. Maybe maybe she's got flies around her head that are annoying her. She was putting a little bit of a Osana facial expression there by dropping her ears. Not something you... I'm not, oh, there are lots of flies on her head. That might be what's going on. But they are looking in much better condition. When I got back in December, folks, I don't know if you remember, we did a couple segments on the kudu and they were looking in a very, very bad way. And their hips were sticking out. And we're looking forward to the lushness and greenness that has now covered the landscape. Cool breeze, a shady spot is what it's all about out here. And, well, not only do the kuru enjoy it, so do our predators. What is she? Definitely annoyed with something. Oh, something annoying her on her head. You can see that in her ears. Oh, shame, mama. And he does it again. Definitely something inside her ears. Shame. I don't think it's detrimental to her health. I just think she's being irritated. And I suppose you've got huge ears like, oh, hello, shake it up. But huge ears like that is a beautiful breeding ground for all sorts of animals, insects alike, to move in and do their thing. And 
Okay, so from one shady spot to another, we're going to send you back on over to Lauren, who hopefully has got a nice cool breeze blowing into the tent. So we've dived quite deep into Tangana and Hosanna and the questions that remains on everybody's minds, which we don't have any answers to. Now, people do have opinions, of course, but we don't have the answer. What we have to do is wait and see. And that's why we are here. Safari Live, let everybody see. And we observe exactly what is happening. Now, talking of parent and child, we do have a very interesting clip from this past week of Miss Tandy and Tlalamba's interaction. Princess Tlalamba was not in her most refined state as she lounged in a tree, lethargic and gluttonous. Although her tree climbing skills do require more practice, we continue to see signs of growth as she moves closer and closer to adulthood. However, her energy and youthful nervousness is peaked when her mum is around. With speculation circulating regarding the possibility of Tandy's next litter, the Queen has a lot of things to think about, causing her to take to a tree to reflect on the fundamentals of motherhood and her leopard lineage. The relationship between Tandy and Tlalamba is still adorable. Now, obviously, Tandy has been an excellent mother. There's more to come on Tandy later. And Tlalamba is getting to the age, she's over one now, where she will start to receive these snarls from Tandy. Tandy is telling her it's almost time to go out on your own. She is still very protective of her, of course. And normally female leopards start to go out on their own around 18 months. Now that's just on average. So Talamba has not got long before she will be on her own. And the interactions between mother and daughter still fascinate me. Now something interesting we have here that many of you might have seen before is our wonderful elephant skull. Now the reason I'm just pointing it out is because it was not in this position or this angle or this area yesterday. So we do believe a certain elephant known as Daryl has actually came came along and had a little look at the skull, potentially played with it and clearly moved it. Isn't that fascinating? I wonder what he was thinking about this skull. So from a mischievous elephant, we're going to send you to mischievous lion cubs up in the Mara with Isaac. My drive through all those rocks has paid off. I'm so happy, I'm so excited. I must warn you that this is a sight not for the faint-hearted. If you're afraid of seeing blood and gory looks, this might not be appealed to you, so I apologize for that. This is the sausage tree pride. And surprisingly, there are only four females here, and they have managed to bring down a fully grown buffalo. Just imagine. Unbelievable. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. I don't know what led me to this, but I just had a hint that let me follow my instincts, and I just came all the way here, and looks like they haven't even opened it. So this must have happened like uh, maybe two hours ago. And that lioness that one of the guides told me she saw her must have come to fetch. It is made, being made by a five-month-old cub. She's so hungry, she doesn't want the mom to eat. And that's why, you know, she's making that growling noise. Unbelievable. I was just saying that... Leon, yes, well done, sausages. This proves to me that there is 
future to this Cubs and to this pride. It is amazing that only four females can gang up and bring down a fully grown buffalo. Can you believe it? Can you, can you imagine? It's unbelievable to me. You know, I always thought, you know, they need the power of the males to f bring down a uh, buffalo or there could be more than six to bring down a buffalo, but just three of them. Comparing them, Chatmoa, you ask where did the sausages get their name? We give them that name because the area they hang around is full of a tree called the sausage tree. And it produces these big seeds that resemble a sausage. And also they like climbing the sausage tree. So we named them the sausage tree pride. That's how they got the name. Just going back, comparing this pride of the sausages to the Olololo 19, there is a big difference, a very, very big difference. Because um, the Olololo is big, but they rarely bring down a buffalo. The only one that I've ever seen them bring was the one yesterday, and there were 19 of them, uh, like, uh, sorry, 16, because a female and a youngster were, were not there. But these females are just three. I still cannot comprehend this. It's um, amazing. That is the young cub that was making all that growling noise. And um, he's digging in. Uh, he's not um, playing with meat. These are the guys that have been hanging down the laga about two kilometers from here uh, for the last about one week. And I think when they last they had meat was, has been a while and that's why they're really, really going for it. You can tell the females are still very exhausted, maybe from the hunt. They haven't eaten at all. Actually, you know, um, sometimes back, about a week ago, we also saw them, the old Onyo pike, two males, and these females feeding on another buffalo. Let's take a look. The Oldonio Pikes are a fascinating coalition. As to be expected, the Oldonio Pikes dominated these buffalo carcass as the sausage trees lionesses looked on. Interestingly, however, the old lions continued to show remarkable tolerance for the hungry cubs, feeding peacefully alongside them. Same patience was not extended to the lioness attempting to sneak in for a snack. <laughs> Despite this, the entire pride fared well off yet another buffalo. So, um, it means to me that these guys need to eat a buffalo almost every week. And it's the only animal available in the area at the moment. These are hard times because the small game has moved away because of the long grass that you know makes them feel vulnerable. So they move away to the shorter grass. Lions are very territorial and they cannot leave their territories. So they have to make do with whatever whatever is available in their territory. And in this case, these female lionesses have proven that they are worthy of their territory and they are going to remain here no matter what comes. Like I said, they haven't eaten and the female is trying to move in, but the cubs are telling <coughs> her that we need to eat also. Truly, we're talking about two very different prides. This is the sausage tree pride, which is dominated by two males, the Ldonio Pike males. The one that female that was injured belongs to the Olololo pride, which is dominated by two Kichwa pride, fang and half tail. 
and they are in total 19. We're quite a distance away from the Olololo 19. We are about 30 kilometers down. We are very close to the Tanzanian border. So it's totally two different prides. But there are two prides that we follow a lot. The smell is rather not very appealing from where I am, but I have to experience this and it's part of what I do. So I'm gonna be here. Crafty. Females do most of the hunting. Females, if they're around, do play a role. But females have proven, and again and again and again, that they can do hunting without the males. And this is the case here. They do most of the hunting, and they can hunt without the males. She's trying to eat, but the youngsters are too hungry. Maybe the last meal they ate is that buffalo they ate about 10 days ago. And the males were, you know, um, at, in attendance that time. So I don't think everybody had a lot to eat. And that's why, you know, the cubs haven't eaten and they won't really eat. I'm thinking Kinky might be here. She hasn't stood up. I don't know if she's here, but I'm going to be telling you soon or later if she's here. Mitty is here, the one to the right, close to that cub feeding right now. That is Mitty. She is the mother to the three cubs that James found yesterday, the new bundle of joy that are about three weeks. 